Hello and welcome to the Friday, December 21st, 2018 edition of the Sand Center Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. You may remember Sandbox Escaper, the Twitter handle that was used to publish a couple of Windows Saturdays in the past. Well, Sandbox Escaper has a Christmas present for us in that he published yet another Windows Saturday exploit that in this case allows for an arbitrary file read. So it's not a huge deal, I would think, because you essentially have to run code on the system in order to then read arbitrary files. But it's essentially sort of approach escalation because you can also read files that you normally would not have access to. The vulnerable function MSI advertised product is typically called by installers in order to advertise products and that's the function that runs as system and that can be used to read arbitrary files. No patch of course available yet and as far as I can tell no response from Microsoft so far. Not much you can do about it other than well uh, be careful what software you run on your system. And Amnesty International has a great write-up with a summary of different, more advanced phishing attacks that they have seen against activists, predominantly in the Middle East. Now, one particular neat feature here is a bypass of two-factor authentication. Essentially, what the attacker does here is that they do set up a typical phishing site, but then instead of just collecting your credentials, they actually have a copy of Google Chrome that is automated to enter those credentials into the legitimate websites. And if there is, for example, a two-factor authentication prompt, that prompt is just forwarded to the user. And if the user authenticates using two-factor authentication, well, uh, then the attacker will add an application-specific password to the account, which of course then will give the attacker persistent access to the account. In addition, Amnesty International did observe some lookalike domains that have been registered for anonymous email services. For example, for Proton Mail, someone did register protonemail.ch and use that to launch phishing attacks. In general, one weak point of two-factor authentication schemes have been these application-specific passwords because typically they aren't really application-specific. They're used for things like email clients and such, but you can pretty much use many of these application-specific passwords to authenticate to arbitrary services offered by the particular site. And the FBI gave us a good Christmas present in the form of shutting down a number of different booter or stressor services. These services are advertising denial of service for hire and are often used by criminals in order to, for example, extort money from sites in exchange for stopping a denial of service attack. On the somewhat ironic and maybe not so good side, well, all of the websites for these services were hosted behind Cloudflare, which of course also retrieves some of its uh, revenue from protecting users from denial of service attacks. And Russian security company Positive Technologies pre-released some details of a paper that they're going to present in March at Black Hat Asia. The problems they discovered are related to a somewhat undocumented debug feature in Intel's chips and in particular accessible via the visualization of internal signals architecture or short visa. Now, typically these features aren't accessible whenever the system is sort of running in its uh, normal operational mode. And actually Microsoft requires if a system has the Windows logo on it that it turns off, for example, any JTAG access or other hardware access that would allow debugging of a running software. But apparently positive technologies found a number of undocumented features that do allow access to critical data on a running system, in particular since there's a built-in logic analyzer 
on the chip that can be used in order to measure signals and debug the system. Back in 2017, so about a year ago, these researchers actually came up with a vulnerability that did allow access to uh, these interfaces via USB. Now, this has been patched by Intel now, so not sure how many people, of course, have applied that patch. Well, and this is it for today. So given the holidays next week, I'll probably only have a podcast Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Still a little bit uh, on the edge about Wednesday. We'll see if there is enough news to talk about. Thanks and talk to you again on Wednesday or maybe Thursday.